Alright, hey YouTube, what's going on? Um, this is Ruby or um, Average HB on Xbox Live. Um, about to do some uh, commentary analysis on a set of matches that I just um, finished playing uh, with a Cody player. And um, the reason why I picked out this matchup to use um, for my channel is because I think it demonstrates a good point on like what you can do during just you know casual sessions on Xbox Live or offline or wherever where the objective isn't necessarily just to win but you want to like focus on certain things like whether it be you want to anti-air better or you want to footsie better um, you always want to try and play practice with um, a certain goal in mind and to just kind of keep that goal in mind throughout the course of the training session and hopefully you'll begin to see progress the more and more that you play and um, these set of matches my focus was on the close range footsies between Akuma and Cody because uh, well I'll just show you as the match goes on but basically um, although the match is heavily in Akuma's favor if you're not very precise with the buttons that you press and the counter hit setups that you put on Cody close range he can easily just jab or short his way out of your pressure and if you let him out of pressure um, too many times you'll see that that um, your um, that damage will start to add up at the end and it'll be harder and harder for you to win the match but uh, anyway I guess I'll sort of just demonstrate this in a couple of matches um, so let's start off with one match where I don't win because you can see I think this is one match where I let I gave up too many opportunities that I had to pressure him and I lost the advantage too many times and it ended up with me losing the match. So um let me see. Okay. So let's see how this plays out. Alright, so we just got really pressure. Um I think a nice thing to do in the beginning of the match is to sort of feel it out and with the Kuma, um a good way to feel out uh, your opponent is with fireballs, obviously try and baiting him to jump over a normal ground fireball, but also another thing is you can fake and throw uh, air fireballs to sort of beta response there. It's something Takeda likes to do a lot. I got a setup there. Um, it was a normal forward throw, and I threw him into the corner, but since he was in the corner there's a certain setup I had in mind when I was going to do it you can do dash short, low short stand short and jump short as a fake cross up setup but um, there I was too far from the corner to be able to execute that so I just went for immediate pressure with jump forward and here's the situation that I was talking about earlier um, this is the range you do maybe two three ticks maybe and you're going to be at a range where stand jab will whiff, you might still be in range of, um, or low jab will whiff, you might still be in range of low short, but the key is, he's going to be mashing on one of these because he's afraid of um, care grab with Akuma um, you can but um, crouch strong is a good way to counter hit um, on Cody however cr crouch strong is 4 frames start up um, Cody's low jab and low short are three frame startup. So even if it means basically in order for you to get a counter hit, you would have had to have started executing low strong in advance before he even pressed the low jab or low short. So counter hitting, it's so so. Like he, I was getting mixed results. Like a lot of times, even if I did a low strong, I would still get counter hit by his low jab or his low short. So. Uh, oh yeah, another thing this guy liked to do is um, if he was backed into the corner, anticipating the grab, he would jump back, and I, was, I didn't bait it there, so I got punished. And this video might end up being really long, because um, there's a lot of stuff I kind of wanted to break down, but um, I don't, so I'm going to have to like be pausing a lot, but I won't have time to explain it all, because I don't have the technology to pause the way I want to. But there, there you see the low jabs, letting him get out of pressure. Got him in another meaty situ situation with the ticks. Went for low strong, didn't get it. I finally sniped the jump back with a stand, uh, jump fierce of my own, but ended up getting put in the corner. Yeah, it's punishable by sweep. 
try to bait him into grabbing, but this guy didn't really like to grab on empty jump situations. Usually when I go for empty jump lows, I always get thrown I always get thrown out of them, but um, uh, this guy, he wasn't really throwing that much. Yeah, I just, as you can see, pretty much all the t opportunities I had where I knocked him down or I had him pinned in a string, I didn't get a lot of counter hits, I didn't get any grabs off of them, so things didn't go well there. Let's see how I adjust here. Just trying to bait him. Okay, got a sweep. Got the empty jump. Sweep again. Went for empty jump jab there. And the reason I want to explain this, um, the reason why I went for empty jump jab is because, like I said before, going for empty jump low short, low short comes out in four frames. So it's kind of hard to do an empty jump and land in get into the active frames of your low short before your opponent has a chance to fully be woken up and have his hitboxes active again. So that's why um, sometimes if you see an Akuma do a, if you see anybody really do a low short, empty jump low short mix up, they always get grabbed out of it. It happens a lot to me, so I find that rather than doing a low short, low jab has a better hitbox and it comes out a frame faster. So although you're losing the low high mix up, you're essentially turning the low high mix up into a grab or not grab mix up where or button up, you're turning it into a button or no button mix up where in one end of the 50 50 i could grab you or the other end of the 50 50 i'm just going to do a low jab and hit you out of um the startup frames f f frames for your throw yeah but yeah that's basically the psychology behind that um I've been playing around with that idea for a while. I, I've had mixed results. I don't really like to go for empty jump mix-ups. But, um, yeah. There's no strength. See, he whiffs the low short there. Um, it took me a while in the set to get keen to, like, what I should do about that. I was trying to counter-hit it and not having much success there. But I think the, I, the main idea that you want to do is you want to walk out of the range of those pokes let him with them and then walk in after in the recovery phrase and grab. I think that's probably the best punish. It's kind of hard to execute consistently though. Get a punish there. Oh, I missed the sweep. Yeah, I got caught by the low short there again. Baiting, baiting, waiting for it. He doesn't want to do it. Yeah. Another thing that's um, I've been uh, trying to do here is stopping the slide. I've had some trouble with that. Um, I've, I've been playing around with the idea of focus, but it's actually a pretty fast slide, so I don't, I, it's kind of hard catching it. I don't think you'll, it's hard to, or at least it's hard to catch on a level two. I'm sure if on a level one, if you're fast, you can get it on level one counter hit, maybe early level two. And after, um, Another thing I want to explain here. Um, one thing that um, I don't see a lot of Akumas do is off of a fireball juggle or anti air fireball juggle, Akuma gets basically a free demon flip palm or jump roundhouse on pretty much on most characters that don't have a, let's say, that don't have a faster than five frame wake up reversal he can do he can do basically a jump in or early pre he can do meaty pressure if they have four frames or less then you can't it's not as successful but um it's always good if you see a juggle you know hit just confirm it and go for jump roundhouse or um meaty jump roundhouse or meaty uh demon football at least for spatial advantage too Got a counter hit there. Oh, it didn't finish though. Trying to look for the whiffs. You see him whiffing. I didn't think that would cross me up. But notice, notice the life advantage situation here because I did lose this match. I have ninety percent. He has about six fifty five, fifty percent, maybe less than that. It technically, you know. 
and the the matchup is 6-4 uh, my way, so I shouldn't lose this, but if you make too many mistakes, you know, uh, Cody really hurts. Like, if he touches you two, three times with maximum... not It doesn't even have to be maximum efficiency punishes either. If he just does jab-jab strong, uh, fierce um, whirlwind on you, maybe two, three times, you're going to be dizzy in succession. So, you... Yeah, well, anyway, you'll see how this turns out. Got the counter hit there. Didn't confirm. That was my fault. Air to air, I uh, trades, and then he gets uh, hits me out of my back dash on landing. Okay, looking good. Oh, but let him get me, let him get me with that low short again, and I lost maybe twenty percent off that. And he does random low slide ex, takes off another good chunk, and then a random roundhouse. Let's take that game. So yeah, minor details like that, and then, you know, they leave you less room so that if your opponent wants to go nuts and do random stuff like those slides, then you're going to, like, essentially lose the match for it. So it's, it's troublesome. I'm moving kind of slow here, so hopefully I can get this one, get this match in quick before I have to make a new video. <clears throat> Trying to like, like any positional advantage, advantage is really important for Kuma. He does a lot of damage in the corner, so you know if I can get the opponents to just back up by just walking towards them, you know I'll gladly take it. All right, got the DP. Go low again. No, I did miss a sweep though. Gonna look for it. Oh, there's a nice uh, sweep for the low short there. Just going for a meaty uh, down medium kick demon flip to keep him in the corner and keep me put pressing the advantage. Uh, but I got caught trying to do an overhead and he low shortened the uh, um, criminal upper there. That's a safe slide. Can't do anything about that. Again. Catch that. Don't manage to sweep it for the punish though. Okay. And um, the reason why you'll see me do like, I'm, I gotta be fast. Um, the reason why um, Cody is also somewhat troublesome is because of his hitbox. The typical Tokido signature Vortex 3 zone theory doesn't really work on him for zone 1 because if you do um, low short, if you basically do from range 1, you do a down medium kick dive kick on him, it's going to whiff and he can just walk, he can basically just walk under it for free and punish you. Um, whereas with, I haven't had that issue with any other character really. So you have, I still need to go to training mode for this, but you have to find another option that hits front side on him from the first range that um, is essentially a replacement for doing a down medium kick. So, yeah. <clears throat> Trying to bait it? I tried to go for the grab there, didn't get it. And um, at this point in the set, I mean, we played probably like nine ten games by this point but you'll see that um i'm going low a lot and that's because i've noticed you know he hasn't been grabbing me out of these empty jumps but just to be safe you know i'm doing option select low tech i'm pressing both low jab and low short when i go for the short but you know i'm still not getting grabbed just in case you know i do tech throw in case he does try and throw me I went for the meaty air fireball pressure there, didn't get it. I uh, went for the um, fake cross up there. Did I go for it again? No. Just went for a uh, meaty palm pressure. Safe. Just finish that round out. Um, hopefully, I mean, by watching these, you sort of get an idea of what I'm saying here. Um, these games, I'll try and find some more games um, to post up in the second part that demonstrate better what I'm trying to get at here. <clears throat>